And we're back, everybody. Thank you so much for enduring that very, very, very long commercial break. I went and had, had lunch. It, it was spicy. In retrospect, I probably shouldn't have had a spicy thing for lunch because my nose is probably going to be running now. But anyway, <laughs> hi, Corey. Welcome That's back. Right. It's been a Hello, hot friend. night. <laughs> Ready for some more magic? Yes, I am indeed. Yeah. It is the Clearly Frame Advantage MTG Tournament. We are going to be rocking it through the next few rounds. We're going into round number four now. And we're going to take a look at the first deck list here. It is Anatoly Zibin's, what is this, Teamer midrange deck, it looks like. And uh, tell us about yeah. this one, Corey. Yeah, Teamer midrange here. This is kind of what I thought was going to be the best deck to start off. You get to just combine all the best cards. You get to play Azika's Chariot, Gold Span Dragon, and All Runs Epiphany. I think those really are at least three of the top five cards in standard. You just get to compile them into one deck, try to com combine that extremely powerful gold span dragon into all run play that we just saw last round, as well as just having the resiliency of Azika's Chariot, Renan Seven, and the acceleration of just Ferris Sentinel and Magda. So a very well-rounded deck that gets to play a lot of counter spells in the post board matches against these Is it decks and gets to play a lot of removal spells against these aggressive decks. So it just has two very clear but very good plans against the metagame all right well the opponent is going to be dominic i'm going to butcher this surname <laughs> the next knee i tried my bestest i'm just gonna call you dominic uh playing yeah, golgari planeswalkers now what's happening in this one i see more kitty cars <laughs> Yeah, more Azika's Chariot. That's going to be the name of the game of Standard here for a while because the card is so good, but gets to take advantage of that Azika's Chariot run in seven plan, but then gets to just still do the Blood on the Snow plan to be able to bring this back. It's not really doing any of the mid range um, Azika's Chariot plans or the Mono Black Snow plans. It's not picking a lane essentially trying to get the best <laughs> of both worlds and uh, try to take advantage of both of those strategies and we'll see if it's pulling too far apart or if it's just going to be maybe a uh, evolution of those two decks so i'm interested well, to see that golgari deck sometimes the risk pays off sometimes yep. it falls flat in its face let's <laughs> see which of the two can out here for our players as we're going to jump into round number four action Dominic versus Anatoly Golgari Planeswalkers versus Teamer Midrange. All right, let's get underway here. Looks like we have uh, Dominic on the play uh, with just a nice start. You know, can't complain about that at all. Same, yeah. same up top. So this is going to be a, a good game, it looks like. Yeah, always like to see. Uh, both decks doing the things they want to do, and whoever comes yeah. out on top is going to be the victor, which is Perfect. the thing that usually happens in Magic. Yeah, yeah, things touche, off here with a touche. shambling <laughs> ghast as the tournament one play would like to find a deadly dispute, but has that turn three play of Skullport Merchant too, so that's a very, very nice start here indeed for Swiss Tech. Down on the bottom of the screen, that is Anatoly. Yeah, even if uh, Skullport Merchant, even if you don't find anything off the top that is an action spell, hello, Storm of the Festival that just came, Skullport <laughs> Merchant being able to just on turn four sack Shambling Ghast and then sack the treasure it makes to just draw two cards, that is really, really good if your opponent is not pressuring you too much. Yeah. Skullport Merchant, such a neat card. There's not that many sack outlets in standard right now, and uh, mm -hmm. this is certainly one of the best ones. And the fact that there is four toughness. Four toughness on yeah. that card is also very, very tough for a lot of decks to deal with. Like even see Dragon's Fire uh, in hand right now, um, not being able to cleanly deal with it unless we find a Goldspan Dragon. Yep. That would be the key to uh, turning Dragon's Fire into a four damage spell. But for now, just gonna have to be happy with Prosperous Innkeeper ramping up towards the big dumb spells in Renan 7 and Arvin's Epiphany. Shambling Goss getting frisky, looking to find another treasure token, but uh, it's just gonna have to, you know, be satisfied with getting sacrificed by Skullport Merchant later, like you mentioned. Yeah, remember me saying turn four, it's just great to just sack that Shambling Ghast? Not anymore. No. We have a Zika's Chariot. If oh, you yeah. can play that on turn four, it's just as trivial as that. Do it. It, it is that good <laughs> of a card, especially when you're on the play. Oh, yeah. And there is a second copy of Dragon's Fire being yoinked off the top of the library. I have four mana available for uh, Dominic. 
Yeah, this is where Dominic, and this is why Prosperous Innkeeper is so good, and what it's trying to do in this teamer deck, this is where Dominic really wanted to have Azekas Chariot uh, of their own to kind of get ahead of it. The first person to play it has that advantage of being able to attack with it and get that extra cat and instead of having to do some blocking right away, so. Yeah. Let's see what the line is here. Alrin's Epiphany can be sent into Fortel. Ranger Claws is available too. Yeah, we're likely to see just one of the spells be played um, this turn, just so you don't have to sack that treasure. So Ren and Seven is available for next turn. At least you get a 4-4 that can kind of compete with Azika's Chariot. Um, but as it stands right now, I'm really liking uh, Dominic's position so far. Yep. Looking good. Got some removal. Wants to hold on to that treasure, like you mentioned. Red and seven on turn four is very powerful. And uh, likely what's going to uh, stand up against the onslaught of the Essica's Chariot. Now, is there a consideration here for the Binding the Old Gods? Is Ranger Class enough of a threat to worry about? Or does Anatoly just keep doing what he's doing? So I think the one thing you want to do to stop Ranger Class with Binding is really wait till they send it to level 3. Once they commit that mana, they're very unlikely to actually play something that turn. So you make them commit their turn, and then you blow it up. You kind of get that tempo advantage. You kind of time walk them, even though uh, there's no All Runs Epiphanies on Dominic's side, but you can kind of leverage your removal spells to act as time walks uh, if you time them perfectly. So no, I don't think I would do it now, and I just love Jam and Chariot here. Especially because you can just storm the festival next turn. Oh, yeah. And think if you get Ren and Seven binding oh. off that. Like, the game is over. Yeah, that's, will... <laughs> that's pretty much tickets, lights out, you know, go home, think about your life choices, etc., yeah. etc. Et yeah, I wouldn't need any uh, clearly frames to be able to see that that game is over. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of, this and weekend until the end of October, <laughs> my friends. Get 30% off your first pair of frames using the code MAGIC30. Mm -hmm. Go do it. What do you I was, I was be trying to do counter. it in the break, because we, we <laughs> have the time in the break, right? And yeah. uh, my prescription doesn't have all the information I need, so I need to go get an eye test. Gosh darn it. Ah, dang it. Dang, dang it. it indeed. Well, at least you're getting them. They seem, uh, they seem awesome. Yeah, I want to get some. I think, they, I think they'll be cool. And if they don't make my ears and my head hurt wearing headphones, then I'll be very happy. Yeah, that seems ideal. I mean, I even just having decent vision, staring at a screen for long enough, my eyes kill me by the end. So oh, yeah. anything that lessens that blow to your eyes uh, seems good. Yep. Take care of your eyes, man. <laughs> Gotta play video I... games long into retirement and the old age home and the grave. You know, keep your eyes healthy. Yeah, you down? You wanna you wanna go to the same retirement uh, yeah. home and just like battle commander when we're Heck like yeah. seventy five? I'm in. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> At least we'll still be able to see by then with uh, yes. with help from these classes. Yeah, exactly right. You just got a jam this... storm of the festival here, I think. Oh, heck yeah. You know, just doing due diligence and making sure that all of the options are weighed. There's a ranger class, there's a planeswalker, there's a bunch of pesky permanents in this battlefield. But I'm and all for jamming some storms. And Skull Port Merchant can just sack anything, right? It isn't just uh, uh, a non-land, right? Let me double check here. Skull Port? I think only uh, sacks artifacts and creatures. Just artifacts and creatures. Okay, I was going to say yeah. a pretty sweet interaction is just using up chapter three of Binding the Old Gods to like sack it with that trigger on the stack. <laughs> uh, was It would be a cool interaction. But yeah, wow, what a week storm the festival. Wait, what and did we get? I missed that. Just two lands, just a oh. layer and another land. It was just five lands as a choice. And womp, once womp. again, we see another storm the festival that just looks really, really mediocre. Come on. I know we call you Sloco, but don't be worse than Collected Company, please. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if I truly even love Storm of the Festival there. Like, I think I would have liked just seeing Binding the Old Gods on the Tree Folk, and then you just send... You don't even have to send a Zika's Chariot. You just send the Cats plus the two one ones at yeah. Ren, and then there's only a 2-2 two -two and a 1-1 one -one to block, so no matter what, Ren falls. But now, I mean... 
the teamer player desperately needed land. So this uptick from Ren could really, you know, change the game here. So I didn't love that play by Dominic. It's just too risky. Of course, it could have looked amazing, right? If you just hit binding plus something else, then it looks awesome. But you also had to use a treasure to do Storm the Festival. So yeah, I think I would have liked binding there. All right. So two Ulrens Epiphanies being a that was sent a big into draw. hotel. Oh, hello, Ren and Seven. Let's copy some tree folk. Yeah, and it's another decision here, though. Do you want to just do that play that I was kind of talking before? And it kind of looks better mm. now if you binding the tree folk because then you can actually crew the chariot. No, I guess you can't. Uh, if you want to also take down Ren for sure. So you can go binding, you can hit the tree folk, and then, oh, and then you have four mana left over so you can animate Faithless Haven. Okay, that's, I think, what you want to be doing here. Binding, animate Faithless Haven, crew, and then attack at Ren to deal with the tree folk and Ren and save Ren and Seven for the next turn is what I think I would lean on. We shall see what what Dominic is thinking. Using all the things here, as uh, Ren and Seven is uh, finally going to get deployed. Or excuse me, Anatoly. I got the name mixed up on the deck there. That is our Golgari hero. Yeah, that's a really tough place. So many options here, and that rope is coming down too. All right, so a bit of a mix-up here with our uh, our deck names. Uh, Anatoly is on Teamer, so that's the top okay. player. Dominic is down I... <laughs> below, so you had it right, Corey. Okay, okay. I was questioning myself. I don't, I don't know if they switched or something. <laughs> Am I losing it's just my production mind? To, uh, <laughs> yeah, production is just trying to keep us on our toes. I like it. Uh-huh. <laughs> who is who? <laughs> okay, so I like this. You're able to... Uh, um, get in there with all these creature and guarantee that Ren falls. And then you have, I'd really like to hold back that, uh, shambling gas to protect your own Ren. Yeah. Cause if it's certainly going to die, you know, I'm pretty sure that the shambling gas is going to get eaten here to make the five, five smaller. If that jumps in the way of the chariot. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. You can take out the tree folk. That is, a, that is a good line. Yeah, and I guess if you're planning on sacrificing it anyways, might as well get it in there. Okay, yeah. okay, I like this. Just send it on its merry way. We'll see a trade there. Essica's chariot will die. Ren will die. And you don't need that shambling goss to deal damage here. Yeah, you might as well have it uh, deal a point because you're not going to lose the merchant anyways and then deal with the tree folk yeah. and get a little card out of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. sorry, nice that was going point. to face, not to the planeswalker. Yep, that's right. It couldn't make up its mind where it was swinging. I mean, that's yeah, what's called a shambling ghost, right? It's, it's not a <laughs> I know exactly where I'm going ghost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> Oh, so now, I mean, I guess we do have the Shatter Skull Smashing to just play straight away and get this all runs down. But we're mm -hmm. going to be able to take the next three turns uh, for our teamer player for sure. We got to love the classic Snarl on turn six, <laughs> never being untapped. Ah, uh, stupid Snarls. That's <laughs> unfortunately the uh, state of the mana base if you want to play three colors. Yeah, they're not good. Since we lost the Triomes, it's unfortunate that that's the option we have, but mm. you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes when you have this tough of a mana base. Uh, Prosperous Innkeeper, Magda, Despair Sentinel, they all help a little bit, but they do not do everything. Mm -mm. Not infallible, as we're gonna see many turns here being taken by uh, Anatoly Zibin on top of your screens. And all that Swiss stack down below can do is sit and watch and wait and hopefully get another turn. Untap Snarl. Whoop. Whoop. Round your bases. Yeah. 
Now you can take down Ren if you want. Oh, not even trying to uh, go for it. You mean you I don't, don't want three turns in a row? <laughs> yeah, I guess not. And here's that play that we were talking about so long ago. I wouldn't be too shocked if Binding just clears this up now. Uh, now that Rager class has put in that mana. But we also might be at Storm the Festival territory. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like we are one short. So being able to binding Ranger class and maybe Faithless Haven or something like that seems pretty strong from Dominic's side. Yeah, certainly he has uh, plenty of options available to him, and it's always it's always comforting when your opponent is basically tapped out. Like, okay, you have a bunch of creatures, but I can take <laughs> my time, make the best decision, and you won't have any instant speed interaction. It's wonderful. Yeah, pretty comforting as well when you just have a uh, a couple pairs of soon to be nine nines uh, coming <laughs> in at your opponent face. Like red and seven, if it gets out of hand, it is just so tough to deal with if these tree folks live. <laughs> so good. Oh goodness me, nine nine. Let's go. Let's swing. Let's hit things. That's my yeah, favorite kind of magic. <laughs> Attack all <laughs> button is your favorite, huh? Mm, exactly right. I mean, look at look at that board. On the other side of things, it's just a bunch of little itty bitties. What are they gonna do? Tickle you? <laughs> yeah, that's about it so far. And that's why I'm just like, I'm not in love with Prosperous Innkeeper as a card anymore. I think it's being played a lot to start. But once Winota left the format, yeah. that's really where that card shined, right? Because it was able to ramp you. You know, it was a non-human uh, that could trigger it. I think it's lost a lot of its luster moving into yeah. this new standard format. Um, but the one thing it does have going for it is on turn two, when your opponent has a removal spell, you play that and they don't really want to kill it. And you still get to automatically ramp. So that is like the one benefit to it is the creature yeah. is just so not great. People just don't want to deal with it. But I don't know <laughs> if that's a, a good case for the card. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just thinking like what the other <laughs> options are. There's Tangled Florahedron. There's um, Snack. Lotus Cobra. I think yeah. Cobra is underplayed right now too. That like nobody's really playing that. It's all um, Prosperous Innkeeper and and Lotus Cobra is just an incredible magic card. But the thing with Cobra though is it dies as soon as it hits the board, right? Yeah, most of the time. Most of the time. And that is the, the advantage of Prosperous Innkeeper. But the fact that Prosperous Innkeeper only gives you that Lotus Petal effect where you only get to use it once. Yeah. It's like, is it better leaving Cobra where if it goes unchecked, you just kind of can run away from the game or run away yeah. from the game? I so there's there's good and bad, of course. Now, the mana dork that I like is Magda. Ooh. I granted her yes. no, she doesn't. She, does, she doesn't tap for mana, but she makes you treasures. And that I yeah. quite like. Magda is awesome. Uh, uh, that's probably the best to drop that ramp to, in my opinion. Um, like, better than Cobra. Just the fact that the treasure synergies get paired so well with Jaspera Sentinel, as well as Goldspan Dragon. We can't find Ember Cleave anymore, but you know what? This is still uh, pretty decent. <laughs> well, this is going to be a big old yeah. chunk of damage here. I mean, we're going to go into another Alrin's Epiphany. Is this Four, lethal? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus four... Oh my god. This is exactly lethal with the den. <laughs> this is Xaxes. How on earth did Anatoly Oh, oh never mind. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Well, Who I guess it actually den is the still Xaxes, but <laughs> it, it is still Xaxes. Go go on, let the dragon have its day. Wow. <laughs> Oops, you did. Time walks. This just in. Are good. Uh-huh. <laughs> Incredible win. Oh no. Well, wow. yep, that's that's the power of uh these ridiculous cards. Alrin's Epiphany, and, Goldspan, Dragon. Just so much value there. And the brutal thing is from Dominic's side, even if Dominic just left back one creature, that one four, if that one four stayed back, it was gonna be able to block so many of those extra turns that Dominic would have survived, but it just looked so far out of the realm to actually present lethal. You know, I think I would have attacked all as well there. So that was just pretty unfortunate. Didn't play around double all runs of Pivony into Goldspan Dragon, which yeah. is pretty unlikely. You know, so, yeah, when you yeah. when you put it like that, you're just like, oh, that. In what world does that ever happen? You know, they always yeah. seem to have it. 
And there was one card foretold, and there's no other foretell card. So you know they had one. So it, it is in the realm to kind of play around it, because actually the den was lethal too. So all they all the, all uh, uh, Anatoly really needed was one more all runs off the top and two draws. Hit it, got lucky, and uh, stole this first game. I'm going to jump into game number two here, but a couple of tweaks being made to the sideboard. So talents, does it stay? Does it go? It seems like it's going to go. Yeah, let's send that out of there. Yeah, test of talents you really want against the all runs epiphany deck. Not that great, um, you know, ag against these other decks. Just not being able to hit the planeswalkers is a pretty big deal. Like if you can hit all their blood on the snows, sure, that's kind of cute. But not being able to disdainful stroke red and seven um, with test of talents, I, I think that's just too big of a liability. So a couple tweaks here being made on Dominic's side with our Golgari Planeswalker deck. I know chat was uh, interested to see this deck in action. And like you mentioned, it's 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 kind of trying to do the two things that the green deck and the black deck do very well. But we're yep. still not too sure, we're not too convinced if the combination is the way to go just yet. It really did look good, game one, and it mm -hmm. was, you know, it was definitely Dominic's game to lose. He was wildly ahead, and then just Auron's Epiphany proved <laughs> why it's uh, still one of the best cards in the format. Oh yeah, there's not much you can do when your opponent takes three turns in a row and you have no instant speed interaction to kill stuff, so... Yeah, Alas. totally agree. Now, one instant speed interaction I do like is Infernal Grasp. This is such a good card. You know, mm -hmm. when Heartless Act... Uh, you know, when, um, what's, what's the new one? The, 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 the uh, power word kill, power word kill. That's the one. Thank you. I was like, yep. it's a long, it's a long winded name. That yes. one kind of <laughs> replaced heartless act, but it wasn't that great. Cause it doesn't hit the dragons and there's plenty of those right now in standard. So infernal grasp, yeah. like two life to kill a thing. Sure. Sign me up. Yeah, I think I, I played Power Word Kill in a deck like early on and I played like their only creature was Goldspan Dragon. And then the next match I played against Angels. I'm like, all right, I've had <laughs> enough of that card. <laughs> like yeah. we're done here. <laughs> yeah. Why can't we just have two mana kill a thing? Huh? Exactly. Why, why is that? <laughs> <laughs> Deemed too powerful. Yeah, but Fateful Absence too for Mono White, you know, okay, you give your opponent a yep. clue, that's not that bad. But just being able to deal with Planeswalkers that early on in White, oh, yes, please. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's one card that I've been messing around with a lot in Naya Shells. I think that card pairs extremely well with Showdown of the Scalds. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, haven't really figured out anything that's extremely good. I do have a spicy little Naya Werewolf deck that I've been working on uh, that plays that as its key removal spell, and Ooh. when you just draw so many cards with Showdown, uh, it tends to work out pretty good, but I just miss playing with that card, to be honest. I, I think I'm going to have to bug you for a list. That sounds great. I, I gotcha. Gotcha. Sweet. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right. This game has uh, progressed while well, we've been yammering on about other stuff mm. and things. Uh, we've got a Despair Sentinel, a little wolf down with Ranger Claws, and on the other side of things, we've got Prosperous Innkeeper and Skullport Merchant. I guess the one advantage, as we we're chatting about two mana dorks, um, Prosperous Innkeeper has got is that it can be chowed and you won't really miss it. Like you've mentioned, the life gain isn't really. It doesn't really do all that much <laughs> in the long run. So it, yeah. it's just something there for Skullport Merchant to munch on. Wow, this was. Pretty impressive here. Anatoly just chose to not really keep the shields up for the last two turns and leave up Disdainful Stroke, even though Azika's Chariot was possible both of these turns. Dominic mm -hmm. just didn't draw the land to be able to play it and really, really um, punish Anatoly. And now all of a sudden it's looking really bad for Dominic. And we see these prosperous innkeepers like, yeah, sure, you get a land, <laughs> you get a pedal, but now what are you going to go down to two lands to try to play one of these chariots that's now going to get countered like pretty bad luck to not draw a third land uh from yeah Dominic. that's a bit of a feels bad but you know yeah, magic's really gonna do what magic's gonna do sometimes yep just has to to turn back no attacks as of yet uh, is an option to clear out this board with shadow skull smashing I'll go for like the this. ranger class though yeah just let's get swinging i like i like to hit things 
Yeah, you just get that value turn after turn. So start turning that wolf. It's not really going to do much here because that skull perchin, uh, skull port merchant is going to just do a block this turn. But next turn you'll be able to attack. It's a four four. Uh, and then there'll be no good blocks while you get to hold up disdainful stroke this turn. And you know naturally Dominic's going to draw the land. Uh, <laughs> you know, two turns too late after this. Oh yeah, of course. I like this attack, though. If you want to kill this little wolf, you're going to lose two creatures. Skullport Merchant will survive. Yeah, it's it's not an awful block. I, I, I think I would do it. You just don't have to kill it then next turn. Um, but you do miss out on all that life life gain from Prosperous Innkeeper. And yeah. Prosperous Innkeeper with Azika's Chariot does gain you a lot of life, so it's pretty mm -hmm. tempting to keep it around. Um, but I think if Dominic would was able to see clearly like we are right now that there's two disdainful strokes, I think you just blocked uh, to control um, uh, to control this three three now. Corey, are you seeing clearly because you've gotten the new clearly gamer glasses from <laughs> clearly.ca? I think so. I think so. <laughs> oh, of Ooh. course, it's the layer of the Hydra as the land. Are you kidding me? What a tilt, yep. I thought temples Aye. rotated. The Temple of Tilts, I guess, are still coming back in the form of Lair here for Dominic. <laughs> oh. And unfortunately, the guard is not down. Mm -hmm. You gotta be sniffing out that counter spell in hand here for Anatoly, or from Anatoly, so. Yeah, you're really we'll doing see it. Essica's Chariot this turn. Yeah, we might just see a pass and maybe sack one of these Prosperous Innkeeper or something if you really want to sniff it out, but when is it getting any better you know like and and pretty soon even next turn we're able to just all runs epiphany uh and start gaining even more advantage all runs epiphany plus ranger class is pretty cute at being able to <laughs> attack get a token all runs and then attack get another token uh generates a big battlefield pretty quickly oh yeah shaman goss is gonna join the fray here please play that land <laughs> yeah yeah, good call, good call. I know it's not great, but it. get that thing on the battlefield. And, uh, we're going to get to snack in here on Shambling uh, Goss. Make another... Tr Actually, no, we're going to kill the Jaspera Sentinel. Nice. I like that very yeah, much. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, that's very not neat. Bad. So now that, that takes off uh, Alrin's Epiphany has a possibility next turn. Yep, so we'll have to play it a little bit more slow and steady from Anatoly's side. So probably going to see maybe just a Ranger class um, able to attack with this 3-3, three, three, make it a 4-4. Four, four. Hold up the Strainful Stroke for one more turn and just play as defensive as possible. All right, this wolf is just going to keep chipping in away. Prosperous Innkeepers are sure. happy to let this wolf into their inn. <laughs> And Ranger Class is going to bring some more wolves to the wolf pack. Ugh. Brutal. <laughs> I know, right? Just brutal. Yeah, and at this point, you know, it, it the life total may say 2020, but this game is really heavily favoring uh Anatoly right now, just being able to next turn all runs epiphany, and you just know these Golgari decks do not have an instant speed way to deal with it no negates or anything like that so you just mm -hmm. get to jam uh, and, and just kind of go to town yeah this is just a bit of a feels bad you know the only yeah. saving grace potentially is skullboard merchant chowing on these prosperous innkeepers try and draw into a land yeah feels bad because then you're not even getting one of these disdainful strokes out and they're gonna be good eventually yeah you're just falling too far behind at this point Bridge tracker the draw here for anatoly i think we and may... now yeah we karen yeah we might just be able like don't even really have to um all runs right now i i, I think just getting that briar bridge tracker into play playing that shatter skull smashing tapped and then mm -hmm. having the ability to hold up disdainful stroke or just sack that clue and then you have another creature that's going to be able to attack once you do all runs and then that turn that you play all runs it's just you've just gone so far over the top because your battlefield's already so much better than dominic's oh yeah Skullboard Merchant doing play. the best he can, and Briarbridge Tracker is going to hit the board, like you mentioned, leaving up the Disdainful Stroke. Love Very that play. 
Well, there are the lands. They're all tap lands, but, you know, Faces Haven at least was a nice pickup off the uh, sacrifice of the innkeeper. Yeah, Dominic really wanted to draw Veil of Summer right there uh, to push the <laughs> Zazika Chariot through. See now, Corey, that card is A, not legal, and B, banned. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That card's pretty mm. good. It's just, just a bit. Just I people lie, that are just I, I listening. I was sad when it got banned. <laughs> I was like, but but I could play green cards and not worry about blue and black cards. Yeah, and, and when it got banned for me, I'm like, oh great, I can play control again, it's an, and it's awesome. So uh, <laughs> we were on the opposite side there. <laughs> for sure. All right, oh, well, it's, it's just... blocking time, because these attacks hurt. Man, Ranger class and Alrin's. <laughs> just two chump blocks here, too. Like, that feels real bad when you get another turn. Oh, yes. Oh, hey, Snarl. <laughs> <laughs> Now we can level Ranger class either to two or three. You can level that other one, get two counters, and then just Ranger class up to level three, maybe hit some creatures on the top. Um, another mm -hmm. option. It really doesn't matter at this point. We have 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 damage coming in. Oh, checks yeah. notes, 16, okay. 16, yeah, 16 equals <laughs> deadsies. And that's gonna be a pretty darn convincing victory here for Teamer midrange yeah. in the hands of Anatoly Zeban. Golgari Planeswalkers, unfortunately, could not find land to save Dominic's life. And there goes the kitty cat. Yep, and that whole, match really, that whole match really got dictated, especially game one, by Dominic thinking, like, there's no way that I'm going to be able to die from 20 life. Your battlefield's not even that impressive. And then <laughs> the all runs off the top. Didn't even need that gold span dragon in game one. Just had <laughs> the den locked up anyway, so it wasn't like that was the over-the-top top deck. Uh, and then game two just made it look easy from that teamer side when you get to bring in Disdainful Stroke up against a deck that has to fight with Duress. So you just don't have that. You're just jamming big threat after big threat. Yeah. And that doesn't really do much to uh, Disdainful Stroke, so. Yeah, very tough matchup there indeed.